If you like running around at incredible speeds while one-shotting everything on the screen, then this is the build for you. Blood Surge Necromancer is an incredible build this season thanks to some changes and some adjustments that we've made as well as the construct. This build is incredibly powerful and it is by far our fastest Nightmare 100 speed farm build. In fact, it's so fast that this is the build that I'm going to be playing for the Gauntlet, which is the event that's coming up here in a couple of weeks. I think Blood Surge will be the best build for Gauntlet and I don't think it's going to be close. This is also a build that can work incredibly well with or without Ubers. In the clips that you're seeing right now, I am wearing no Ubers. This is just legendaries and uniques. And you can see that I'm still clearing incredibly fast. And this is Nightmare 100. This is the hardest content in the game. And with the Ubers, this build just gets completely out of control. I have to say Blood Surge is so much better than I expected, just like many of Necro's builds this season. And I think the construct is a big part of this. A big reason why we're seeing so many of Necro's builds that used to have severely underperformed doing so well this season is because of the resource generation on the pet. That resource generation is invaluable for builds like Blood Nova. You can see in single target, even with a one-handed weapon, and Rathma's Chosen, which is giving me a 50% attack speed buff, I am still able to spam Blood Nova, even in single target. That is incredible. The gameplay of this build is designed to be simple so that it can be as fast as possible. Just try to keep up Bone Storm all the time, and you can use Lidless Wall to get extra Bone Storm so it's always up. And as you're running around, just spam Blood Surges and one-shot everything. When you see an Elite Pack, you want to Decrepify it, and then use Reap on it to spawn a corpse, and then your Ring of Sacrilege will automatically corpse tendrils that corpse, and you can just spam Blood Surge and kill everything. For our gear, on the helmet, our best in slot is Harlequin. But the aspect of Shielding Storm is a fantastic alternative as it will make you almost unkillable. Just make sure that you have maximum life and cooldown reduction on your helmet. The other two stats aren't that important. On our chest piece, we want four damage reduction stats. And then we want um, Juggernaut Aspect for the increased armor. We do not want total armor on our chest piece. This is a bad piece for me. I'm way over armor cap. On our gloves, we want attack speed, crit chance, and ranks of blood surge. Those are by far the most important stats. And what we're looking for is the blood bathed aspect on them. This will cause our blood surge to echo, doing 50% damage. On our pants, we need the blood moon breaches. What you're looking for on your blood moon breaches is the plus two ranks of amplify and the highest maximum life roll possible. Really, you do want a well rolled pants of these because all of the stats are so important. And this is going to give us a 70% damage multiplier on our overpowers as long as they're cursed. And this is why it's so important to curse elite packs when we engage with them. On our boots, we want movement speed, an essence cost reduction, and then intelligence. And we're going to be looking for the wind strikers aspect so that we can get increased movement speed after crits. And remember, every cast of blood nova is hitting every enemy three times, plus our bone storms are constantly hitting enemies, so we're getting loads of crits. So it's very easy to keep up the Wind Strikers aspect. On our weapon, we're looking for the Obsidian Bleed of Rathmus Chosen, the Rathmus Chosen aspect. This is going to give us 50% attack speed after we overpower. Now attack speed is really good, not only for just standing still and casting, but while we're running around, the attack speed will also reduce the animation time of our cast. This means that we're able to cast and run, cast and run much quicker. It's also I actually prefer a one-handed weapon with Lidless Wall over Grandfather for speeds because it's so easy to do damage while running. On our necklace, this might surprise you, we are not running the Banish Lord's Talisman. And the reason for this is twofold. One, we desperately want movement speed on our necklace. And two, we really want Grasping Veins on our necklace. So movement speed is a vital part of speed farming, and especially with Necromancer, a class with so low mobility, and to the point where I'm even running movement speed after killing an elite on my necklace. This means after I kill an elite, I'm actually able to movement speed cap as Necromancer, which is a huge win for us. I'm also running essence cost reduction to make Blood Nova more spammable, and rings of Coleste blood. Now those two stats are also very important. This is a GG necklace, this is what you're looking for. And we're going to be running, like I said, the Acid to Grasping Veins, which is going to give us crit chance and crit damage after we use Corpse Tendrils. And this is particularly powerful when paired with the Sacrilege. This is something we're very familiar with now. 
and the Sacrilege is going to be auto-casting Corpse Tendrils and procking the Necklace. I'm running the Ring of Starless Skies for my other ring, but you can run the Aspect of Torment and you will still have plenty of Essence to work with. The Ring of Starless Skies is better, but Aspect of Torment isn't that bad. You're looking for crit chance, maximum life, and those are your two most important stats. Everything else on your ring is just whatever. Finally, we're going to be running the Lidless Wall. This is for the 100% uptime on Bone Storm. As long as Bone Storm is up, we're going to be getting a massive damage buff in the form of 20% crit chance and a massive damage reduction buff. Plus, if you're not running Harlequin and you're running the Aspect of Shielding Storm, this is absolutely amazing because we're going to get tons of shields. Our construct for this build is incredibly powerful. We're running the standard Flash of Adrenaline with Genesis, Duration Support, and Tactical Support to get 100% uptime on a 50% damage increase. We're also going to be running Tempest, which has become very standard. It has a 0.9 second attack speed, meaning it's going to be spamming out abilities. When combined with Evernight, this is going to give us a second Harlequin, or one Harlequin if you don't already have one, giving us plus four to all skills. We're going to be running the Safeguard Support for 15% damage reduction, and the Resource Support for 20 resource every time it attacks. Now, if you don't have Evernight, you're going to want to run the Fortify Support for the Fortify generation every time it attacks. This will allow you to recoup your Fortify much quicker uh, after taking a big hit, and when you first start a dungeon, it's going to allow you to get to Fortify Cap faster. For our Book of the Dead, we're sacrificing skirmishers for 5% crit chance, we're sacrificing bone mages for 25% overpower damage, and then we're sacrificing the iron golem for 30% crit damage. So you can see that with the iron golem plus the base crit multiplier, and the fact that we are running grasping veins, that critical strikes are incredibly important. This is a big part of the build. For the skill tree, we're going to be running reap with acolytes reap, this is going to give us 30% attack speed as long as we kill an enemy after we reap, which is really useful, and reap is going to give us damage reduction, and it's going to spawn a corpse. Reap is just by far our best basic skill. Five points into Blood Surge. We're going to be taking Enhanced Blood Surge, which will cause it to heal us, which is actually fairly nice. And then we're going to be running Paranormal Blood Surge for a guaranteed overpower every six casts. Coming down here, we're going to be taking Corpse Explosion with Blighted Corpse Explosion. We're mostly just taking this to proc the Reaper's Pursuit, which is pretty crazy, I know, but this 15% movement speed is everything. We're also going to be taking Grim Harvest, so every time our Sacrilege casts a skill, we get two Essence, and then Fueled by Death, so we get 100% uptime on 9% damage. Three points into Death's Embrace for the damage increase as well as the damage mitigation. Three points into Amplified Damage, because as long as we're finding Elites, they're going to be cursed. And so, yeah, and then we're going into Decrepify, down to Abhorrent Decrepify for the cooldown reduction. Decrepify is a very important part of this build because with Harlequin plus the um, pet, we're going to be getting up to 12 ranks of Decrepify, especially if you, if you include the pants as well. We're getting like 30% damage reduction from Decrepify, which is an astronomically high value. So Decrepify is a very important part of the build. We're putting three points into Reaper's Pursuit, as we said before. Then we're taking Corpse Tendrils and going to Plague Corpse Tendrils for the Vulnerable application. We're putting one point into Gruesome Mending to get access to Transfusion, which we're putting three points into. These Blood Orbs are fairly nice, uh, especially when we get to our key passive. Then we're putting three points into Class Blood for a massive damage multiplier. Three points into Drain Vitality so we can get Fortify Generation. And three points into Tides of Blood for Overpower Damage. We're going to be putting 3 points into Inspiring Leader for a 12% attack speed buff, 3 points into Standalone for 18% damage reduction, and finally 3 points into Momentum Mori for increased crit chance and overpower damage. And we're also taking the full Bone Storm package, as we've already discussed. 20% crit chance, 15% damage reduction. Incredibly powerful, and as long as you have a storm out from Lidless Wall, you're going to get these two buffs. Now the key passive is fairly important. Every 12 seconds we're going to get a guaranteed overpower, and whenever Blood Orbs heal us for at least 8,000 life, we're going to reduce its cooldown by 2 seconds. This is why we are running Drain Vitality. I'm sorry, this is why we're running uh, Transfusion so that we can get the Blood Orbs so that we can use them to proc the passive. I don't think it's worth it to run Blighted Corpse Centrals. I looked at this. But you very often miss the Blood Orbs and the Vulnerable application is typically much better. 
Next, we're gonna talk about the Paragon board, and then after that, we're gonna talk about a few tips and tricks to really help you optimize your build. So, we're gonna be taking Essence for a 22% crit damage multiplier when enemies aren't healthy. Remember, this is a skill that's going to hit three times every cast. So the last two hits of it are always going to get this 22% multiplier, and with how much crit we're running, we are getting a ton of crit chance. We're running Exclamation for Fortify Generation. This has started to become standard in a lot of my builds because it's going to keep you Fortify capped all the time as long as you have Sacrilege, which almost every build is running now. So this ends up being very useful. I'm running Bloodbath for 35% multiplier on Overpower. Scent of Death is going to give us 15% damage reduction when there are two nearby corpses, and when there aren't any, we do 15% increased damage. This is going to give us a 15% damage increase at the start of pull, and then it's going to give us some damage mitigation after we start blood surging. We're going to be running Corporeal for a 10% damage multiplier, and then we're going to be running Undaunted for 10% damage mitigation, and we're also going to be taking Blood Begets Blood. We're not going to have this up very often, but the blood herbs that we spawn from transfusion end up giving us decent up time on this buff, and I think it's worth it. Then we're going to be taking Sacrificial for another 10% damage multiplier, and Flesh Eater for a 40% damage multiplier after eating 5 corpses. And remember, with all of our auto cast of corpse explosions, we're going to keep this up all the time. I think one of the most valuable tips I can give you is to try to keep track of your Sacrilege auto cast of corpse tendrils. You want to make sure that you're always corpse tendriling whenever it isn't to get as much time as possible in the aspect of grasping veins. And on boss fights, whenever you cast Reap, it's always going to try to cast corpse tendrils first. Because remember, we're not running Hued Flesh, so in single target, our only corpse generation is Reap. So it's very important that you only Reap once every eight seconds so that it always automat ca automatically casts corpse tendrils. Now you can Reap and instantly cast corpse tendrils, and if you do it right, it will actually happen before the sacrilege can corpse explosion it. But it can be kind of finicky sometimes. So, you know, this is just something to keep in mind. But especially in boss fights, it's very important to try to get as much uptime on corpse tendrils as possible. Now, overall, this build is incredibly strong. It might not have the single target that Bone Spear has, and it overall, it might not have the damage of some other builds. But because the content is gated at Nightmare Dungeon 100, this build annihilates and it ends up clearing faster than any other Necro build. If you're wanting an extremely well-rounded build that can kill bosses and is also the fastest build to level glyphs and all of that stuff, then Blood Surge is the move. But if you're looking for something more heavy and single target, I would suggest you play Bone Sphere. However, I do think that this is an S tier build because of its ability to just destroy Nightmare 100. So I hope you guys liked the video and uh, leave a like and a comment and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.